I think that we're seeing a painful, unfortunately, selection because we're in the state of New York, which is definitely by design. Uh, we're in a blue state that's all by design. Don't get it twisted. There is no question that Bragg bringing this in New York, uh, look at the Fulton County DA and, and so on and so forth. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Is there anyone on hand who can tell Alina Haba the reason legally why the New York hush money payment trial made to interfere with the 2016 election is here in New York? A legal reason for it. I mean, she says that the reason why all of these criminal charges against him are in blue states is somehow that there was some sort of like forum shopping or venue shopping. Interestingly, she completely forgets about his criminal charges in Florida because Florida is not a blue state and it doesn't really go with her theory that he is, of course, being unfairly charged in these states. Fourth Washington, D.C., these venues are selected exactly for this reason, Martha, so that they have a blue state with a blue pool. The reason why he's being charged in New York is pretty easy. It's because that is where the alleged crime occurred, the events of the crime. It's a, that's where you are going to charge any crime is where the events of the crime occurred. And, and in general, for any kind of litigation, what you have to meet are two things called personal jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction. Personal jurisdiction requires there to be um, some sort of connection to the venue by the parties. And this is something that you would have to do more for uh, civil cases, right, let's say. And that's if you have a home there, if you have a business there. If I am um, being sued by somebody, I don't have to travel to a completely other state that I have no connection to, right? You have to only bring a lawsuit against somebody when you have a personal connection to that jurisdiction. And then there's something called subject matter jurisdiction, which means that 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 court is the appropriate court to evaluate the subject of your lawsuit. So let's say that the lawsuit has something to do with uh, something under California law. You can't bring that in Florida because Florida isn't the right venue to interpret California law. California is the right venue to interpret it. So generally you need something called personal jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction. In a criminal case, those are both easily met because the crime occurred in that particular state. The person had to have been there, right, in order for the crime to have been committed there. And then the fact that the law being violated is the state law. So that is why we have this criminal trial in New York, because the violation of the law is the falsification, the New York Penal Code law, the falsification of the law, and the events around this happened in New York. We know this is where his uh, Trump business is. This is where he was you know, engaging in this kind of behavior. So this is why uh, New York is a judge admonishing the defendant. I've seen it time and time again. I've been admonished like that. It's by design. It's to make you appear to be uh, inept. It's to make you appear to be stupid in front of a jury. Because what I'm seeing is, is, is complete politicization of our legal system. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? And same with Georgia. You know, this is why, you know, it was the Georgia laws that were allegedly broken and uh, his phone calls and the actions of his co-conspirators are in Georgia. And then same with D.C. Again, it's obvious January 6th happened in D.C. and it's a violation of the January 6th law. But these are not the only misinformation that Alina Haba is putting out this week about this very serious trial. And it's one thing to put out misinformation when you are um, maybe part of Trump's campaign, but she is, she is a lawyer. She does know better. Uh, I think she knows better about the law. And so it's super irresponsible for her to talk about it. Uh, we're in a blue state. That's all by design. Don't get it twisted, folks. They do this intentionally, just like they're bringing the one in Washington, just like Georgia. They pick these states on purpose. The other thing that she talked about this week was the fact that she says Biden employees 
could get on the jury. But we know because we've all been, even though we don't have cameras in the courtroom, we've been hearing uh, quite a bit from reporters in the courtroom. And we know that one of the questions that the jurors had to uh, answer was where they worked. And so clearly both sides would know whether or not a juror was a Biden employee. And again, that's like so vague. I don't even, you know, you know, there's thousands of federal employees. I don't even know if that's what she's talking about is all those employees. But it's not as if one can just sneak on the jury. They have to disclose where they work. And then they could either be excused for cause by the judge if the judge sees that makes that person biased, or Trump's attorney can use one of their preemptory strikes to remove him if he feels like that person is a bias based on where they work. Tons of misinformation um, from Alina Haba. And again, we see Trump this week violating his gag order, retweeting tweets about the witnesses, him trying to argue, or his lawyers trying to argue that um, a retweet may not be his speech and so shouldn't be a violation of the gag order. And we're gonna see next week the judge ruling on this. And people know, and people know it's very unfair. The gag order has to come off. People are allowed to speak about me and I have a gag order just to show you how much more unfair it is. And the conflict has to end with the judge. The judge has a conflict, the worst I've ever seen. And it has to end with the judge. The gag order has to come off. I should be allowed to speak. Every time I come out to speak to you, I want to be open because we did absolutely nothing wrong. I showed you yesterday 30 stories, 32 stories of experts, legal experts, and I don't have one the other way. 32 stories of legal experts saying very strongly there's no case, this occasion has been brought. Trump did nothing wrong. And they say it strongly, Trump did nothing wrong. So they ought to get rid of the conflict with the judge because that's something that uh, he cannot do anything about. It's wrong. It's wrong. And the second thing is I have to be released from the gag order. They've taken away my constitutional rights to speak, and that includes speaking to you. I have a lot to say to you, and I'm not allowed to say it. And I'm the only one. Everyone else can say whatever they want about me. They can say anything they want. They can continue to make up lies and everything else. They lie. They're real scum. But you know what? I'm not allowed to speak. And I want to be able to speak to the the press and everybody else about it. So why am I gagged about telling the truth? I'm only telling the truth. They're not telling the truth. The judge has to take off this gag order. It's very, very unfair that my constitutional rights have been taken away. But in, uh, you can look at maybe like civil defamatory law and a retweet can be considered you publishing that law and you could be liable for defamation even if you didn't write the original tweet. So if he, I would think that a publication, him publishing um, something that's a violation of a gag order would be the same as him saying it. So I would think that is going to be something that the judge certainly should sanction him on, not only for his original tweets, but for his retweets. Because again, I would, you know, he's got millions, right, of followers. He's he's publishing this information that he shouldn't be about the witnesses. And that is corrupting the fairness of our judicial system because a criminal defendant is entitled to a fair trial, but they also don't have a right to disrupt the judicial system and harass witnesses, make them feel afraid of being able to testify truthfully and honestly. And and, and that and that risk to the integrity of our justice system is something that I think the judge is going to take seriously and he should take seriously because the problem is is we know what happens when Donald Trump doesn't get checked. You know, what happens is he's going to end up eroding our justice system just like he eroded the credibility of our media back when he ran in 2016. And so the more he talks about the justice system being unfair, 
the more he harasses uh, witnesses and family members of the justice system, the more he's allowed to erode it, the more he sets a precedent for others to feel as if they are entitled to erode it. And so hopefully when we see the judge is going to have a hearing on all of these violations of the gag order, decide if they're a violation, decide whether or not to merit a punishment, uh, I would think that he will and should take it very seriously because again, it's not just about Trump, it's about every other criminal defendant that comes into his courtroom after that. And if you make it okay for Trump to harass witnesses and to harass family members of the justice system, you really are allowing everyone else to do that afterwards.